Okay, well, I am here with Ori Moore, and I'm so excited to talk because we have a lot of fresh news. Ori, do you want to introduce yourself to our audience real quick? Hey, yes, sure, Daniel. So I'm Ori, one of the co-founders at Why Charged, the chief business officer. Excited to be here. Wonderful. Thank you for joining me. I'm on the road uh, this week with the Detroit Automate Show, and I just had to make time because I was so excited, not just about the wireless power revolution, but it sounds like you guys have some exciting news as well. Yep. Uh, I think it was a year back that we started to, uh, we developed a five-inch display that is wirelessly powered five meters away, five, maybe even 10 meters away, uh, that can go into retail space uh, to advertise next to products, bringing digital marketing, digital engagement next to products where it's probably the most effective place to engage users. Uh, and we saw a lot of demand for that, uh, but customers also wanted larger displays. So we did what the customer wanted, and now we have a seven inch. <laughs> you got to listen to your customers. And just for folks who might be new to this, I think we uh, we chatted with you, gave a profile last fall, maybe, uh, about YCharts. Can you tell folks briefly, what's the YCharts story? Why are you guys so revolutionary in this space? Okay, so people probably know, uh, have heard about wireless power. But what when we think about wireless, when people hear about wireless power, they think of the charging pad, where you have to place your phone on a specific pad for it to charge it. It is indeed wireless, but it's uh, maybe contactless. It's uh, it's proximity charging and uh, being able to deliver power of, let, let's say, an inch. What Y-Charge does is we power devices from a distance of 30 feet. Okay, meaning if, uh, if you think of your phone, when you charge a phone today on a charging pad, it's basically a docking station, meaning when Daniel wants to charge his phone, he, think, he needs to think, oh, I now need to charge my phone. So I'll place it on a charging pad and the charging pad itself is connected with a wire. When people, if you'd ask people what wireless power really is, what it really should be, they would say, oh, like Wi-Fi for power. And that's what Y-Charge does. You can place your device anywhere. The transmitter would find it and would charge it from 10 meters away. That's amazing. And so it sounds like one of the first use cases that you're doing, like you mentioned, what, what is it, 80, over 80% 80 of purchases happen at the point of decision in a brick and mortar store. And you found a way to install these screens without having to worry about putting in all of this troublesome wires and digging in the walls and so forth. You can just set it right up, it sounds like. Exactly. How come brands are paying $300 billion every week, every year for digital advertising, but where 80% of the buying takes place, there is no, almost no digital advertising? Does it make sense? This is where people engage with real goods. This is where they are with their credit card already. Why, why not engage them? So it turns out it's a hassle to, uh, to bring power to the shelf. Wires are prohibited in retails. Batteries would run out way too often, and, and ESG uh, as well. Uh, but uh, as you probably know, retail media network is starting to generate a lot of traction with sophisticated big retailers and with other retailers. And the missing piece is, how can we power devices at the edge of the shelf? And you just spoke one of the magic words. We launched, uh, I can't believe we launched it in the past year, a section on sustainability, which has been very popular. It's a huge topic. And I was really surprised and happy to see, it sounds like wireless power is impacting sustainability and preventing batteries from going to the landfill. Is that accurate? Yes, what we can do, uh, let's take, a, I'll take a big retailer without uh, adding names, not, not because it's uh, not public, but simply for the sake of not mentioning names. But if a big retailer, a prominent retailer, decides to adopt ESLs, and ESL is only the price label, okay? And you have hundred thousands of this in a single store, even if they last on a battery five years, and you have so many stores, you would have to deploy, to, to throw close to a hundred million batteries every year. That's That's prohibited, right? We don't want that to happen. So there is a transition that even the ESLs themselves would be uh, a rechargeable ESL. But guess what? Someone needs to recharge the rechargeables. 
And once the recharger, once you have a rechargeable ESL and that has access to power, suddenly the price tags can add. Uh, did you know that e ink can do animation? e ink can actually do animation, but if e ink would do animation on ESLs, the battery life would would uh, would be months instead of years. You can do that. Uh, you, if you want to advertise or if you want to promote products with different pricing at the at beginning of the day, at the end of the day, uh, for perishables, for example, or if you have a special uh, promotion for uh, Saturday night something or for football, uh, Monday football, uh, you can't update today because of the concern of on battery life. With wireless power, you get rid of the batteries and you have access power to do whatever you want. That's the magic of wireless power. And we have to say for the Americans are very superstitious. I'm going to put my nation under the bus. We're superstitious about technology. This is totally safe. Like this is not going to give people the 5G, the crazy conspiracies. Like this is just wireless power. It's not going to hit you and hurt you. Yes. Uh, I would say that uh, they are concerned for a good reason. When you transmit something over the air, People are, are, are rightfully would to ask, how does it impact me? So we have two answers. One, our technology is already FDA approved. The second answer is that we're using infrared, which is the most benign part of the spectrum. It's not a man-made radiation like RF and microwave, so it's more, so it's safer than that. And also we direct our power. The transmitter sends a directional beam to the receiver, meaning if you're outside the beam, even a, meter, a millimeter away from the beam, you're not exposed to anything. And when you pass, the, uh, when you were interrupting between the transmitter and the receiver, the beam collapses very fast, so you're not getting exposed to light. So it's light and you're not getting exposed, so nothing to, to be concerned about. That's powerful. And it sounds like it's much more efficient than one would imagine as well, because it's beaming power in every direction is very wasteful, but you're precisely going straight to the device. That's the magic. Yes. The, this is why we can deliver the, that our efficiency is, um, and I'm not exaggerating, 100 times and probably more than 100 times from, uh, better than any other distance charging technologies. Uh, and it's efficient, safe, and powerful. Are you experimenting, I'm curious, with longer and longer range transmissions? And are we heading for a future where I can just walk down the street, I can go to a restaurant, and my phone is charging in my pocket while I'm eating? So, no, in your pocket, uh, it won't happen because this is against uh, if I can penetrate your pocket, I can penetrate your body. And you don't want me to penetrate your body. The technology is uh, when you take out your phone and you place it on the table or place it or walk with it, the transmitter will find it. And as long as there is line of sight between the transmitter and the, and the client device, it will charge it. But not when it's hidden. If it's hidden, it means that it, it would have been great if it can charge in your pocket. But at the same time, you wouldn't want it. Perfect. I love that. And I'm curious, too. It sounds like I'm thinking I used to work in restaurants, right? And I'm thinking this would be a big game changer for you know point of sale just for the restaurant industry, it sounds like. Um, boosting sales, suggestive sale, mark rate of the day, you name it. Have you guys worked in the restaurant industry at all? We're, we're already installed in few restaurants. And we have even uh, a partner that did a pilot for point of purchase displays or table displays. And he was able to prove that with displays, you can drive additional revenues of roughly $100 per week per display. This is a, an amazing number. I think we'll see that more and more happening. If you can create, you, you have your customers, they're sitting at your dining room, they came there to eat your food, and they're already willing to pay. If you're smart and you can offer them, not spam them, and if you can offer them something that they will be uh, thanking you, you can probably add a dessert, add some beer, something that will enhance their experience. And at the same time, for the retailer, for the restaurant owners, you will see more revenues. So definitely. 
That's huge. Well, I'd imagine the big screen, the larger screen would come in handy for that. Was it a big technical challenge to engineer this, this larger screen space? Yes, it's, uh, we, uh, I have here a display. I don't know if you, uh, if you saw that. So that's, that's the display. Okay, that's, uh, that's the seven inch. It has our receiver here on top. Actually, the receiver is, is even smaller than that. Oh, so uh, the little black bar is for the power receiver right there. Yes, yes exactly. Uh, and here we have a sensor that actually measure aisle traffic and analytics. And so we provide you with uh, basically what's needed to do if you want to do the same. Uh, let's say you want to engage. I'll, I'll go back to the technical question in a second. But let's say you want to engage customers. OK, how do you know that the content actually works? How do you know that uh, people are viewing? Do what, What's the dwell time? Can I do A-B testing? I want to, at, at the end of the day, I want to close the loop on the point of sale, knowing that the content actually delivers ROI. So with the, with the engagement analytics, we can close the loop. Regarding the technical challenges, it's, high, it's a higher power display. Uh, what we did is we incorporated this next generation, not the next, no, it's not the next, the second generation receiver that is smaller but higher power. We did a redesign, a slight redesign uh, for the hardware and firmware. So we uh, we were able to optimize the power consumption. I think it's the, uh, not, uh, I would say it's the most efficient display in the world. That's my claim. I haven't proven that, but I know how hard we worked on every milliwatt uh, there. And we're already uh, working. That, that's a long answer. Uh, and we're already already. It's okay. Working. We love long answers here. Okay. And we're already working on the next generation of the firmware that is supposed to be even uh, probably 30% even more efficient with a de wow. dedicated MCU that is more optimized to drive in video than what we're using today. So you've got your own, it almost sounds like a, a fully integrated vertical where you have your own software team even doing your software engineering. So it's custom, it's boutique. Yes. Yes. Wow. It's fully vertically integrated. Uh, we know what wireless power is. We know where the limitations are, where the capabilities are, and we strip down uh, when you're taking an, uh, an existing, uh, let's call it an Android device. It has so many um, additional features and layers that we don't need to drive advertising at the, or advertising or promotion at the point of purchase, but they consume uh, unnecessary power. So we basically had our own operating system and we built our own firmware on top of a, of a dedicated hardware that we developed. So and if you were trying to use Windows or something, it would be very wasteful. But since yep. you're using your own, it's more efficient. Yes. That's brilliant. I love that. Well, and I don't want you to give away all of your secrets, right? But I'm curious, you know, how widespread are you now around the world? How long before this becomes the normal go-to power solution, do you think, of wireless power? That's a good question. It's, uh, I can tell you that we're, uh, we're installed already. We're in our early stages, okay? It's not that we're widely deployed, but we're already installed in Canada, in the U.S., in Mexico, in Brazil, in uh Germany, in Hungary, in uh, in the UK, uh, in Israel, of course, uh, and probably a, a few other locations that I uh, that I forgot, including uh, Asia Pacific. When would it be widely deployed? I believe that in the next two years, uh, we we're we're launching in three different uh, baskets. One is the commercial space. One is the uh, smart home space, and one is uh, is uh, the consumer space. The, the last one will be the consumer. What we believe will happen is that once people would see, you know, people were waiting for wireless power for quite some time. Is it a myth? Is does it exist? Now we have more and more installation. Now people see, hey. This, this thing works. It's in commercial space. It's in public space. It works. Power devices from a few meters away. Why don't I add this capability to my devices? So uh, I think the best way to look at it is like uh, COVID. Only a few locations, but then it suddenly spreads exponential. That's probably uh, uh, how it grows. So it sounds like from what you're saying, this will eventually be in the smart home. This is going to be in my house, making my life easier. 
Yes, we're already selling um, a partner of us uh, that does smart locks. He's already offering smart locks that never runs out of power with excellent connectivity, with superior uh, security to smart home. I'm curious, one of the other sustainability questions, I remember working in IT and, you know, wasting thousands of feet of cable that just went in the trash every year, you know, during refreshes. And it sounds like maybe this is a way to take tons and tons and tons of wasted copper and plastic lines and Ethernet cables, uh, well, not Ethernet, but power, and maybe reduce that waste. Would you say that's fair? I think that, uh, yes, the, the, the short answer is yes. And it does, there are other advantages is when you charge device today when we charge devices we try to charge them as fast as possible it ends up by by shortening battery life because there's a lot of, of stress there if you keep a battery between 20 percent to 80 percent you can extend the battery life by a factor of five so you reduce copper you extend rechargeable battery life and there are devices like, think of faucets in uh, uh, in uh, in shopping center, in airports. They are battery operated. Uh, you can get rid of all these batteries and replace them with supercapacitors that last uh, that are eco friendly. It's an electronic uh, component. It's eco friendly. It will last uh, thirty years. And with this, in with one second of charging from this device, one second of charging, you can serve seventy people. Instead of all the batteries that are uh, being wasted uh, on these devices. Well, it sounds like one of the other things this might impact is also sort of the compliance with replacements. And there's a, such a labor crisis right now in many American industries, I know, worldwide even, where you know getting the staffing to even replace these batteries is a pain. And it sounds like this is a way to say, well, you don't need to replace those batteries. An airport not far away from you, okay, really close to you. Approach Y charge and said, "Can you charge all, all our devices in the in the uh, in the bathrooms?" And when we asked why, he they said, um, "A when the battery dies, uh, we only know about uh, a faucet that is not working or a valve that is not working when someone complains. That's one thing. Then, if you need, if we need to replace a thousand batteries, we need to to uh, to order." 10,000 batteries because 9,000 are disappearing on the way. <laughs> okay, so uh, the labor is not there. When the labor is there, it likes the, they like the batteries too much. Uh, and, and yes, and you get and you understand that there's a problem only after someone complains. So it's a customer experience thing. It's a customer service thing now. It's a customer experience. It's a customer service. And once you have the extra power, you can suddenly say, hey, this, this, uh, this sink is clogged because you have extra power to, the, to, to transmit information and to measure stuff. Okay, and, and you can, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, do remote maintenance with a click of a button without sending people. The, the level of automation can be much more, uh, can be much higher. This is powerful. Well, and like you said earlier, too, with the, with the screens you've deployed, there's also this omnichannel metrics, the analytics, where lots and lots of stores need to know and understand dwell time, traffic, where should we restructure the store and put these products out in the front and so forth. I'm curious. I don't want you to scoop yourself. I don't want to give away any secrets, but it sounds like even more big things might come down the pike. And I think we should watch for from you guys in the coming year or two. It's... Uh... Right now, we're focused. We're a small company. We need to focus. We need to execute what we do well. But we have additional toys for smart home that we are playing. Uh, by the way, there are two that uh, we uh, we announced at CES. One was this uh, uh, cool electric toothbrush charger that everyone wants because it gets rid of the cord in the bathroom, no electricity, no hazard from High voltage, high voltage electricity near water and no messy cords in, in your bathroom. So that's one thing we're toying with. The other thing that we're toying with is, uh, is this one, is the charging pad for meeting room. So you will have a charging pad that, but, but is cordless. And there are other gadgets that are in the bake. Uh, at some point in time, we would go back and allow 
people to license. When the, the technology gets to a certain stage, we can license it, like uh, like being the Intel inside. You use it, take the chip, do whatever you want. Uh, we will provide you wireless power. At That's the beginning, brilliant. it's about seeding, then serve everyone and let them enjoy. <laughs>